first thing I want to do is correct an error I made in the November 8th episode of Stupids. I had stated that the old magazine that shares the cover with Ellen DeGeneres was the first time Oprah had shared her cover with someone else, when indeed, the actual first time Oprah shared her cover was the March 2009 issue, which Oprah shared her cover with First Lady Michelle Obama. Well, the weekend filled itself up with public opinions, blogs and social website comments, and personal views regarding Friday's airing of Rihanna's interview on 2020 and Chris Brown's interview on MTV. And the result tallies, Rihanna supporters will continue to support Rihanna, and Chris supporters will continue to support him. With both scheduled to release albums later this month, it's also raised skepticism of the timing of the interviews. The main thing that it did generate was the attention to the ongoing problems of domestic abuse. And everybody seems to equally agree that it's a problem that should not be tolerated or excused whatsoever. Scheduled to hit the theaters on December 11th is Walt Disney Animation Studios' The Princess and the Frog, an animated comedy set in the great city of New Orleans. From the creators of The Little Mermaid and Aladdin, comes a modern twist on a classic tale, featuring a beautiful girl named Tiana, a frog prince who desperately wants to be human again, and a faithful kiss that leads them both on a hilarious adventure through the mystical bayous of Louisiana. Featuring the voices of John Goodman, Keith David, Terrence Howard, Angela Bassett, Jennifer Lewis, Oprah Winfrey, and Anika Noni Rose as Princess Tiana. A new generation of TV talk show host takes its aim at the old guard. Jay Leno is struggling in prime time. David Letterman has been scandal scarred. And under Conan O'Brien, The Tonight Show has seen its longtime ratings crumble. Cue the new contenders. Comedians George Lopez, Monique, and Wanda Sykes are airborne into a crowded night field. They're vowing to shake things up, but it won't be easy. This is a hidebound format that hasn't changed all that much since Johnny Carson. It's the same format plugging the same name, says Arsenio Hall, adding that he faced the same problems in 1989 when he first went up against Carson and company. Then, however, hip-hop culture was exploding, offering an open lane to Mr. Hall, who recalls his strategy as, instead of going after what's on Johnny's plate, I'm going after what he doesn't eat. Now, media saturation makes that model tough to replicate. Nevertheless, Mr. Hall, who frequently appears in sketches for Jay Leno, is shopping a project he developed with one of Jimmy Kimmel's producers. He describes it as a reinvented talk vehicle. When Bill Cosby announced his plan to release a rap album, the widespread reaction was one of confusion. Best known for his role as lovable dad Cliff Huxable on The Cosby Show, his iconic Jello Pulling commercials, and most recently, impassioned speeches on the moral failings of the black community, Cosby seemed an unlikely hip-hop enthusiast. But acting as creative force behind the album, he brought together three rappers to create Bill Cosby Presents The Cosnerati State of Emergency. In an exclusive interview with News One, Cosby and the Cosnerati reveal how State of Emergency will stack up against the rest of today's hip-hop albums, the inspiration for the project, and why Cosby's message isn't always well received among black Americans. This album is set to hit the stores on November 24th. And these, my friends, are the stupids for the day. Don't forget to log into T-Mob Media for more news, updates, and information. That's www.tmottgogo.com.